Hello and welcome to step six. So we're moving on, we're moving on a pace and step six is possibly my favourite, is it my favourite step? I don't know, I really like this one because I feel like it's the one that makes all the other steps okay and it's called getting stuck and starting again and I really needed this step um, as part of my own process because I needed to know that I had permission to go back to the beginning, I had permission to get things wrong, I had permission to go back to my crazy eating habits, I had permission to fall down a hole, I had permission to fall back into unsupportive and destructive habits during this whole process of trying my best to move forward into more supportive and more comfortable eating habits. I needed to know that it was okay to to go backwards, basically, or what feels like going backwards. Um, I needed to know that it was okay to fall back into habit. And it is okay. It really is okay. Um, and I think it's a real comfort to know that for the vast majority of people, the recovery process for things like overeating and binge eating um, or any kind of... Um, mental or physical health issue, the recovery post process in general for humans is really messy. Um, it's really messy and it's often quite cyclical in that we go through different phases where things are kind of feeling okay and then they're not okay and then they may be okay again and they're not okay and, and we work through these peaks and troughs, through these different phases um, and we move through them, we move through them knowing that each time we fall down the hole, there is another opportunity for learning. And um, that's something that I've really had to, I've really had to be aware of, I guess, is that if I'm falling back on overeating as a coping mechanism, it's because there's something I still need to learn about the overeating experience, I guess. There's something I still need to learn from overeating. It's still serving me in some way, I guess, my overeating. Um, because if it wasn't, I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing it. Um, and being able to find that gem of a lesson, being able to find that teaching, that kind of wisdom, in the painful part of the journey, in the painful overeating part of the journey, being able to find that quickly, I think is what the process has done for me. The process hasn't made everything perfect and easy and finished. I, I have a daily practice of doing my best and looking after myself that never ends. But it has meant that whereas in the past I might have fallen down the hole for a longer time, maybe days or weeks at a time, I might have been in unsupportive habits or unsupportive coping mechanisms. Now I feel like I can have a really short blip of, oh, wow, I'm, I'm back in the food. What's this about? What's this about? Um, and my last sort of overeating episode, I, I read a blog about it. It was really, it was about, it was only a day. It was amazing. I, I really felt like I had so I was kind of cruising on more or less comfortable, normal eating, generally feeling well, but you know, what for me felt like a really good amount of time and then boom, this weird blip, you know, this funny blip. Um, and for me, there were questions there about how do I, how do I have compassion and understanding for other people and their struggles without taking them on as my own? So there was a question about boundaries that I needed to address. Um, and there was also a question about how do I use the pain that I create in my own body because I feel that I have a very sensitive relationship to my body now which means that if I overeat my body tells me very strongly wow you've overeaten this is painful for me my belly will let me know very strongly and very firmly that um, that it's hurting because overeating is painful for for the belly and, um, and I really felt like I was using that pain that I'd created 
in my belly as my guide and my teacher to find my way back to a more comfortable way of eating. Um, and also to kind of very naturally bring me back into balance because if I've overeaten, it's quite natural then actually in the next few days that I might eat less, but not because I'm restricting, not because I've said, oh my God, I've overeaten, so I'm afraid of putting on weight, so now I must eat less, but because my body is giving me a signal that it's not really ready for more food. And for me, having a tight, uncomfortable, painful, maybe bloated belly is a really good sign that I don't need food in the belly. Um, so I guess for me, I learned something there about boundaries between my suffering and other people's suffering and, and how I can maybe have a healthy boundary between those two things. And I learned also something about, about how the sensations in my body can help me to rebalance my eating in a natural and comfortable way without restricting and without moving into fear and oh my god I can't eat because I've overeaten blah 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 so so there were some big lessons for me there in that last little episode of overeating and like I said it was just it was just one day this funny little blip um, and for me that's an amazing an amazing realization that whereas before kind of overeating and kind of crazy eating was sort of maybe the norm whereas now I think generally comfortable eating and what I would call maybe reasonable eating is the norm and and these blips of overeating they haven't completely disappeared but when they do arise I'm I'm on the lookout for what's the teaching what's the lesson here what what questions do I need to ask myself how is this most recent period of overeating? How is this serving me? What, what's going on here? Um, what's going on here? And that's a real process of inquiry. That's a process of inquiry that, that starts with the process. It starts with noticing. So, you know, I'm noticing what's happened. You know, what's happened? Oh, it just so happens that I've had these uncomfortable conversations with people that I love and care about. I, you know, it sounds like they've been in quite a bit of pain and yet somehow my life's okay and I'm, I'm okay, but now I'm overeating. What does that say about me? That says about me that I find it difficult to put a boundary between someone else's pain and my own. And um, I find it hard to, to protect myself from what is actually somebody else's struggle and, you know, I might actually be making myself responsible for someone else's well-being. I guess that's what I'm noticing. Um, and so I'm noticing maybe what is happening in my life that might be creating these overeating episodes. Um, I'm creating space. I'm creating space between myself, between the thoughts of food and the action of eating. Um, remembering that my deepest wish is to be a natural eater and that when I am eating to urge and craving rather than natural belly-based hunger, I'm moving away from, from that deep wish and that deep desire that I hold. Um, I'm curious, I'm curious about what this eating behaviour represents, why I can't stay present to my own life. Um, I'm kind, I'm remembering that I don't need to eat perfectly to be a natural eater. I don't need to eat perfectly because I'm running this I eat what I need, you know, community. I don't need to eat perfectly for anyone or for anything. Um, I'm just me, I'm doing my best. I can be kind and I can forgive myself. Um, even if I have hurt myself with food, I can forgive myself for that. And I can go back to the body. I can go back to the body time and again. I can go back to my practice, my practice of connecting with my body, lying on the floor, rolling around, breathing, noticing the sensations inside my body, moving gently, seeing what feels good. Um, I have all of these things that I can do which will bring me back to a comfortable experience 
very, very quickly, very, very quickly, um, amazingly quickly, actually. I can't quite believe these days how, I call it falling down the hole, and I've talked about that in my groups, you know, you're kind of, you're walking along, everything's good, you know, you're feeling okay, and then boom, you're in the hole. Oh my God. And usually you're in the hole with the food, with the eating and everything else. And you wake up to that reality, you notice you're in the hole, and you kind of make a bit of an effort, it's a bit of a struggle, but then you pull yourself up, you get out of the hole, and you continue your life until ooh, you fall down the hole again. And what I'm finding is that using the tools of the process is getting me out of the hole really, really quickly. I'm getting stuck, obviously, we all get stuck, and I'm starting again. I'm getting stuck, I'm starting again. I'm getting stuck, I'm starting again. Um, and now I feel that I have such a strong awareness of what supports me. Um, and, and when I'm choosing to do something that doesn't support me, that's also very interesting for me as well. So, for example, the other day I had quite a strong headache. I'd done a lot, a lot of yoga, a lot of body work, and I'd noticed that I'd removed a lot of tension in my lower spine, but it kind of crawled up here to my head. And when I have a headache, screen time is really unsupportive for me, I think for everyone, you know, but yet I spent the afternoon sort of with the TV, and it was funny, I was sort of vaguely lying on the floor, rolling around, trying to get rid of the headache, but I also had the telly on and I wasn't prepared to turn it off because I was watching this documentary thing that I was interested in. And I thought this is really interesting, this push-pull between why don't you just turn the telly off and have some stillness and I don't really want to sit in this empty space of stillness. You know, I, I, I need some stimulation, I need some noise. I don't just want to be alone with my own thoughts. Um, and it's interesting, I think, that push-pull between what we know will make us feel good. You know, for me, what I found actually later on in the day is then what did feel good was that I, you know, I finished the work that I needed to do. Um, I lied down, you know, I did a body scan meditation and my headache oof, was gone, you know. So, but I wasn't, I wasn't able to do that immediately. And I was still attached to the TV time and, you know, and I was kind of tolerating the discomfort in my skull in order to have that TV time. I thought that was quite interesting. Um, and so when I move away from these supportive behaviours, you know, I know, for example, that watching spiritual teachers on YouTube, um, listening to particular podcasts, um, reading certain authors, you know, there's a whole load of um, people out there now who are working on body positivity, on health at every size movement, on natural eating, peaceful eating, intuitive eating, um, Buddhist teachers as well, talking about um, Buddhist Dharma and things, a lot of stuff there to support me. And when I'm not plugged into that, um, I, can, I can forget myself, I guess, and fall down the hole. And falling down the hole is when actually I remember that, yes, there is the coping mechanism of eating and overeating, and that's present for me in my life. But there is also the coping mechanism of feeling what I feel, knowing that I'm enough, calling on my, my tools, so my yoga, my spiritual teachers, um, my being authentic and honest about who I am and how I feel, um, recognizing that I'm stuck, admitting to people that I love and trust that I'm stuck. Being really open about that, I think, is a really positive step. You know, saying to the people that you love and care about, you know what, I'm really stuck here. Um, I'm really not sure how to move out of this. And I can tell you that the first step of moving out of it is that, is witnessing and knowing for yourself that you are stuck. And I think there can be some forgiveness there as well, some compassion for the part of you that is falling back into habit. And it's what our brains do. I think that's something really powerful to remember that when we are under stress, when we are in intensely emotional and tricky situations, our brains fall back into habit. It's what they do. 
So it's completely normal and, um, and completely understandable that your brain might go back into um, coping mechanisms such as eating and overeating to, to manage, to manage, because that's what our brains do. So if you're stuck, I'd remember that you always have an opportunity to start again. I'd remember that it's normal and a part of the process. And I'd ask yourself, what would feel supportive? What would feel, what would feel nourishing? What would feel kind and gentle for you and your body? How would, what would that look like for you? Um, and know that there are a ton of resources out there to help you. You know, I really hope that you you enjoy the blog. There's, I really find reading my own blog a bit ridiculous, but I do. I find reading my own blog really quite helpful because I'm just telling myself the things that I need to hear, which is, you know what, I'm okay, you're okay, I'm okay, you're okay, we're okay. Um, that can be a really simple and easy thing to start with. So wishing you um, peaceful eating, comfortable eating, and hoping that if you're stuck, that you'll find the courage to start again and know that we are alongside you. Here I what I need. Yeah.